Hello, I am Dr. Clevet Ridgard, Governance Director of Participatory Governance at Montgomery College. I'm about to share a presentation with you of how our a model of participatory governance that works at Montgomery College. Participatory governance um, works at Montgomery College, and it is a process that you might have to decide which model works best for you at your institution. No two institutions are alike, and you have to consider your culture and your climate. But I'm here to share with you how this process has worked for us and hope that you can glean from this presentation the applicability and utility in your own environment. As I said, I am the Director of Governance, and my duties include all training and coaching, managing the operations of governance, its communications, its nominations and elections, the website, and I liaison with all of the council chairs, with the president, with the senior leadership, and I provide assessment to the governance process. The today's presentation listed on the screen are the items and topics that I would like to cover for you. A little bit about our school. This participatory governance model works at a large multi-campus two-year institution. Our institution has more than 50,000 credit and non-credit students expanding over four campuses. Our model was functioning basically because our board of trustees developed a policy in 2012, 2010 actually, and the president was assigned a task force and our current system was effective in fall of 2012. Participatory governance provides an opportunity to be informed, to inform, and to participate and have a voice and input into college operations by all college stakeholders. We define participatory governance that is committed to the notion that full and active participation in the decision-making process by all members of the college community is the best means for achieving our mission. Governance councils help to ensure that decision makers have a better understanding of the collective wisdom of students, faculty, staff, and the administration. It is a method of decision-making, it's open and honest communication, and it seeks to maximize agreement among all stakeholders. Here's a little bit about the organization and how we are organized. Here is our model, and you will see that we have four constituency councils, four campus councils, and four functional councils. We have three primary uh, councils, councils about people, four of those, councils about functions, four of those, and councils on our each individual campus, four of those. The governance process is made up of about 157 people, all part of the college community. And this is just another diagram to further explain how that works. You see the one, two, three different types of councils. And then we have one last council, which is called our 13th council, that is made up of a chair of each of these individual councils and one college chair. Each council has constitution, handbook, bylaws that provide council leadership and governance procedures. Each council has a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. Most council members are elected for a two-year term, but our students only serve a one-year term. Persons can nominate themselves or be nominated by others. The expectations of each council member is that they participate, communicate, represent, complete the training, and provide feedback. As a council member, you are expected to represent and provide two-way communication. Take information from the council to the constituency and bring information from the constituency back to the council. And this information is fed to the senior leadership and to the president. 
governance roles. There are things we do and do not do. We make recommendations, provide feedback, and disseminate information. We do not manage the college. We do not engage in collective bargaining and any legal rights, federal or state mandates. The scope of our governance is we have group impact. Individuals can bring issues to the councils and as well as, as um, individual concerns that have large impact on a lot of students, a lot of faculty, or a lot of administrators. Each council has a leader liaison, and that leader liaison provides context, history, and background about issues that come before the councils. They help to shape recommendations, resolve issues, and teach us how to approach a situation. Creating culture of evidence. There are many, many ways in which council members can become involved in the college. They're involved with the Board of Trustees through conversations, involved with the president by attending, the president attends college council meetings and is invited to attend several of the individual councils and involved with senior leadership because they serve as liaison on various councils and governance is represented at many of the uh, important senior level meetings. Governance and council leadership, college leadership, there are two ways that we get involved. When a decision has not been made, governance is asked to become engaged in that decision making process, either, through, either by consulting, by being involved, by collaborating or empowering. When a decision has already been made by senior leadership or the president, then governance is asked to inform all of their constituencies. Pathways to recommendations. When decisions are not made, then there are several questions that we ask to help define what appropriate pathway do we take to getting an action resolved. At the beginning of each council meeting, we have an open 10 minute period in which any constituency can bring a concern to a council. Sometimes the concern can be addressed by providing information of existing services or directing the employee to appropriate office or person to address the concern. Oftentimes, it is a matter of governance to investigate or engage in the decision-making process. So two pathways. One, the constituency concern. We resolve that concern by providing them the necessary resources. All of the concerns are tracked annually. If it is a recommendation that is needed, it must be approved by an individual council, uh, then approved by the college council before being presented to the president. The president makes a decision. The decision is monitored art, and tracked until implementation. And this is just a workflow, a chart, to show you how those where the decision starts and how the decision ends. And we have a standardized recommendation format for those decisions that state what the context, what the background of that information, it states the recommendation, provides the impact to students, the economic impact to the institution, and the equity and inclusion impact to our institution. All governance has operational focuses. We focus on being collaborative, we focus on coordination, and we focus on communication. We have standard guidelines and templates. We have a robust website and a Blackboard community. We have annual trainings and retrainings, and we have ongoing assessment. Council meeting guidelines. Each member is asked to come to a council meeting prepare to conduct business. Each meeting has an agenda and minutes. We follow Robert's rules of order. We allow for constituency concerns. We have a chair's report. We allow for new business and old business. And in this pandemic environment, we've been doing conducting all of our meetings via Zoom. And here are some examples of our templates. If you wanna establish uniformity 
and transparency. Because we have such a large number of councils, 13 to be exact, we have to have some uh, uniformity. So I provided you examples of templates that we use for our goals, for sharing meetings, for our minutes and our agendas. And here is our website. Uh, we have lots of information uh, for all college communities to, to go and view the website and get the necessary information. We've learned a lot of lessons uh, with this participatory governance process. As I said, we have a uniform structure. We have constitution, bylaws, handbook, guidelines, We've developed communication and informational workflow through our website, through our email, through our mailboxes. We've got training materials and we've developed ongoing assessments and evaluations. In conclusion, we suggest that you be engaged and be informed. You understand your role and the council's role. You determine how constituents and decision makers can utilize governance effectively, and you use Robert's Rules of Order to move the meeting and the work forward. The promises of participatory governance as a service to the college. It focuses on the mission. It seeks to mu promote mutual success. It invites all members of the college community to be heard. It keeps constituents informed. It shares representative perspectives with leadership. It emphasizes communication collaboration and civility, and it ensures that governance is transparent and an evolving process. Thank you so much.